it's difficult for the auto companies to innovate quickly. And so if they have a particular car that's not selling well, perhaps because it gets atrocious fuel economy, for example, uh, they can't just change the next day, realign a few things it, you know, in their factory and start making a new model. The auto companies are just waiting for the right consumer demand, um, but they have the technology available. They just don't have the will to reform their cars. People deserve better. They deserve to be able to make choices as consumers that let them reflect, you know, values of uh, conserving resources and, you know, reducing our impact on the environment. If we know what we need to do to fix the problem, then we have to do it. It may be an overwhelming problem and we're, we're trying to fix it by degrees, but we have the tools and we just need the political will. And that's where I can come in and we can come in as young people. Road to Detroit was a student-run campaign to increase awareness about fuel efficiency issues in the U.S. and specifically to encourage American automakers to make more fuel efficient cars, but by virtue of the fact that it was something that the youth of America wanted. We did that by initiating a clean car pledge um, and signers agreed to not buy a car unless it was made in the U.S. by a unionized auto company and at least got at least 40 miles to the gallon. We gathered about 13,000 signatures on that pledge throughout the course of last summer and then we delivered them in front of the original plant where Henry Ford manufactured the first Model T on a large scale. We had the bus, which was seven people, touring the U.S., doing all the driving, doing all the events and getting all the signatures. And then there was the ground team in San Francisco. And our plan was to help provide support for the bus and also plan what we were going to do in Detroit at the end of the summer. It was kind of my first, like, big experience with activism. I just kind of, like, dove in because I didn't have much experience and I had to, like, learn all of this stuff. On a bus tour, you know, any day a bus could break down, you could be out of fuel, you could not have anything on your itinerary, get no press. Like, every day you have to be ready to shift your strategy. Um, but always keeping your eye on a, a strong vision. If May and the support team hadn't been there, we wouldn't have got hardly as much press as we did. And um, all the places we stopped, we would have been a lot less effective. May works too hard most of the time. We try to get her to relax, but you know, she likes calling people and she's very good with media. I really don't know how she does it. May is definitely a very, a very confident person, and especially with her speaking. She can, she's very quick, and I mean, she can really think of what matters, what needs to be said. Going to Detroit was, you know, ab above and beyond the events we had. It's an incredibly impactful city. See the city itself and how it's declined, and you can't help but be moved and want to do what you can to, to help the situation. The month after we left Detroit, Ford announced it was going to increase its hybrid production. Like There were things like that that felt extremely rewarding, and um, there was the, the signatures and the press. But beyond that, um, what it did for a lot of people on my campus at Middlebury, it really um, gave a lot of people experience with doing a campaign that we did all by ourselves and, you know, helping people go out on a limb more. That's what eventually drew me to working on the issue of global climate change because it is so complex and it requires solutions that address the environment, that address endangered ecosystems, but that there are going to be people who are already being affected and will be even more greatly affected.